What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another Adobe Live. Happy Wednesday. I am really excited. My name is Idara Ekpo. I am going to be your host today. And today we are joined by Koki Yamaguchi as he's going to edit some cityscapes, um, landscapes, and portraits in Lightroom and Photoshop. So Koki, how are you doing today? Uh, fine, thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today. <laughs> uh, I'm super excited to um, share some of my knowledge with everyone. Um, I haven't really done a live event like this ever. So um, yeah, I'm super stoked. I'm excited. I'm excited. And to start off our Adobe Lives, I always like to ask everybody, where are you joining from? So I am calling from Phoenix, Arizona. Koki, where are you joining us from? Um, I'm joining from Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just wanted you to say that. <laughs> I have always wanted to go to Tokyo, so this is like the closest I'll get as of oh, no. you know, <laughs> for some time. No, but, you don't say that. I know, I know. I'll come and visit and I'll let you know when I come out. Okay. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us. Y'all let us know where you are joining from, whether you are over on YouTube land or you are joining on Behance. Drop in the chat, where are you calling from? Um, that way we can acknowledge how wide our expand, how wide we're reaching. I'm seeing new, I'm seeing New Zealand. I'm seeing Bosnia. I'm seeing Austin, Texas. That is incredible. Perfect. Great. I'm really excited to meet with y'all today and really excited for what we have in store. I see Oliver from the UK. Keep dropping in the chat. And before we go ahead and get started, I want to remind y'all to make sure that you don't miss our Adobe Express streams that occur right before this stream. You want to make sure that you tune in and learn how to implement the easy to use app into your workflow with Claudie from Print My Soul. Awesome. I'm also seeing San Antonio, Austin, Texas again. That is really, really incredible. Nice to see y'all. Really excited for what we have in store today. So Koki, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to you. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself as well as what we'll be doing today. All right. Thank you. Um, so jumping straight in, uh, my name is Koki and I'm a content creator based here in Tokyo, Japan. I do quite a bit of everything, photography, videography for both clients and social. And I don't really particularly have a specific style of photography because I do like a lot of them. So like landscape, cityscapes, portraits, um, architecture and like lifestyle travel. Uh, I believe in that like every specific style has um, individual like story, I guess, like you can things that you can learn from every style so i like to challenge myself to um do as many styles of photography as possible so um yeah this is my website i have a few of my highlights uh for photography here on my website and i've actually loaded a few up here because these files are pretty big wow. it takes a while to load up so this is for landscapes and cityscapes wow. in japan wow. And yeah, um, I think a lot of the times it's kind of luck as well because the condition matters. But yeah, like mm -hmm. snow in Tokyo, which is quite rare. And yeah, creative shots like that. And then I also do portraits, which is this is also in Tokyo. Wow. And yeah, the neon lights kind of, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, it's like really unique for Tokyo. So yeah, these are portraits and these are like, I guess like nature, like natural lighting portraits. And I also have a preset, which is also sold on my website, which I will be using throughout the video. So if you guys are curious, this is where you can check them out. And Instagram, like, I don't think any photographer <laughs> nowadays not have an Instagram, like you, you gotta have an Instagram account. For, <laughs> although things are changing a bit with reels, but I do love um, posting photos here. So you'll see a lot of uh, photos being published here if you guys want to check it out. Um, yeah. Incredible. Uh... Oh, <laughs> incredible. Make sure y'all go ahead and give him a follow on Instagram. Like you mentioned before, if you are going to be interested in his presets, you know where to find them. So make sure you check out your his website. And Koki, before we get started, we had a question. Um, what time is it for you right now? So <laughs> it's 1 36 a.m. Yep. <laughs> the, I'm not lying. I had have coffee right here to <laughs> be awake and tea. So yeah, uh, it's unusual timing, but it, I'm super excited. So I'm pumped. I'm uh, 
ready to go. Awesome. Awesome. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, are we going to be starting in light? Are we just working primarily in Lightroom or do you think we'll touch anything else today? Um, I do want to kind of keep everything quite simple. Okay. Um, I'm not like a editor or like any, I do this as a profession, but I'm not like a professional, professional editor. So mm -hmm. um, I'm, I also don't teach people. So it's my first time. So make things kind of easy for everyone and just kind of highlight one of like my favorite stuff or tools that I use in within Lightroom and keep it simple. Maybe if we have time, I'll jump into Photoshop, but that might be better off for tomorrow's um, live. So yeah. All right. I like the sound of that. So I hope y'all are ready. And I think we're in the place where we're ready to go ahead. Let's hop in Lightroom. Okay. Um, all right. So just diving straight into Lightroom. This is Lightroom Classic. And before we start with anything, I do want to mention that um, editing is kind of like a final touch uh, and you do still need to kind of photograph in the ideal setting, lighting, um, situation, etc., to create these uh, photographs, you know, that you have in your head. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, let's start off with um, cityscape and move on to some kind of like a lifestyle cityscape and landscape images which we'll get into in a bit but um, here so here we have I have my presets and my goal usually for landscape is to kind of create contrast using the Lightroom tools and pull focus on the main uh, subject in the frame so in this case the main uh, point of interest or subject will be this uh, sky tree so mm -hmm. that's the tower um, and then to do that I'll be doing using a lot of masking but mm. let's start off with um, just adding a preset because it's it's not a one click solution but it does help with the overall mm. speed and you know uh, tone of the photos so mm -hmm. once i added a preset i'll usually just uh go ahead and bump up the exposure so that we can see what's going on really uh and, and quickly where yeah. if you don't mind me asking and if y'all have any questions throughout this live make sure you drop them in the chat whether again you are um at youtube or you're here on behance drop your questions in the chat but where were you standing or where how did you i guess take this photo were you <laughs> in a, your room and you this is the view that you have every day or oh, i wish i had this view <laughs> you should see my window it's like <laughs> yeah um i think this is actually not tokyo so mm. this view is tokyo but this is one station out of tokyo which is uh in i actually don't remember the name of the station uh mm -hmm. but it's just an apartment building and then mm. on the top anyone can kind of access it's like a observation but this one's kind of a uh, low-key like a lot of tourists don't know about this because it's a mm. bit of a unique area mm -hmm. oh yeah I really like I really love this spot because you can see the yeah. tower but also at the back you see the whole entire Shinjuku district mm -hmm. so yeah, it's a it's a really nice location. Oh, I love, I love. All right, let's go. Let me continue. I just, I was so curious. I was like, how did you take this photo? <laughs> it's usually an observation day, more or less. Um, yeah. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, I do first kind of angle or like fix the crop of the image, mm -hmm. and there's actually this. Everyone's gonna think I'm such a newbie to do this, but I go in like this and I align it with this navigator, uh, like this, I don't know, the side of it with the building. Mm -hmm. And I look at it, I'm like, oh, it's a bit crooked. And then I just go like this and fix it, which is like the most mm -hmm. like rookie thing you can do. Um, technically yeah. you can do the, you know, you can use this and like align it with the building, but that's how I do it. and. I like to do that before getting into anything because I don't want to watch a crooked image throughout the whole edit. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, for getting back into the whole editing, 
bring up the exposure so we can see what we're working with. And then for this image, I kind of want the highlights to pop and yeah. create that uh, dramatic contrast. So there's no reason for me to uh, like maintain the highlight details here because it's so tiny and it's mm -hmm. not even relevant. So we can just bring the highlight up probably even the whites and then yeah just leave it at that i think we can always come back to it so there's mm -hmm. no um not a big issue and then in the far distance i have the haze plus five as a preset um but i think for this i really love the hazy vibe going on mm -hmm. which creates more uh layers and depth so i'll just put that back to zero um of course you can go higher like this if you want a crispier look but then as you can see it changes every everything yeah. about the image and you got to kind of compensate by using the tools up here so yeah just leave it at zero for this image and despite the blue hour i really love blue hour is like the best time to photograph in my personal opinion but mm -hmm. this is a bit blue so i kind of like to mess around with the temperature and bring it up actually a bit like that and i think we're going to darken the image later so it'll look more like it, that blue but mm -hmm. um i think warming it up is good especially because of the split toning tool down here which adds chat blues to the shadows and highlights but we'll get to that in a moment um and if i'm not sure if you can see this but when you change the temperature the tint kind of it messes yeah. with the tint so mm -hmm. i kind of want to go down with a tint maybe like that and then that kind of fixes it it mm -hmm. kind of brings that teal the blue tone back so oh, yeah i think so i'm really beautiful. happy with that oh, this is so beautiful and we have a quick question yeah well, we have some compliments so first oh, thing is <laughs> perry says photographers always make the places that are not photogenic look beautiful so kudos <laughs> to you <laughs> and oh, then no. steve, steve also said that it looks really sci-fi like um oh, but we do okay. have a question of specifically what camera did you use for this photo and what is your dream camera that you really want to have one day um so i'm a bit of a bias well okay so i love sony and i i'm actually mm -hmm. an ambassador of sony now for two almost wow. two years oh congratulations and so i can literally borrow like the a1 which is like a beast i can't afford it i'm on the <laughs> fence about it but it's crazy um that is my dream camera so this though is shot on my own personal camera that i actually sold because i upgraded this was on the a7r3 mm -hmm. oh wow yeah and i think it does the job pretty well even mm -hmm. to this day at 2022 20, so yeah it does yeah. really well especially even when you zoomed in the amount of detail that is still captured in those further buildings is absolutely <laughs> amazing yeah i think um i think the sharpness for sony yeah the lenses are it's... pretty good um, you can't really match it. So, <laughs> what do you what do you what do you usually use? I use I'm a Canon type of girl, so okay. I I love my Canon. I currently use a Canon EOS R, um, so I love it. But I have been thinking about Sony just because of like things like this, especially shooting in low light. It's just so oh yeah, incredible. and so I'm just like, dang, look at all that detail. <laughs> yeah, it does help. It really does help. I mean, I mean, you you should join us. Yeah, <laughs> I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Canada has my heart, but I'll consider. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, that's pretty much what I use. And if you can see on the top right corner, this will be this is a setting that I've used, and I typically don't use 400 ISO, uh, like during the night like this because I usually mm -hmm. use the tripod. But here I wasn't allowed to use a tripod, so I kind of stationed it on my camera bag which then I was too scared to push the shutter speed too low so that's the result of this being what the the setting is I guess mm -hmm. and then f8 because usually for some landscapes and cityscapes you want a lot of it in focus you don't want um what it's a creative opinion but um yeah usually you want everything in sharp so that's why I chose f8 okay so 
I think from here it's really it's it's where it gets really fun and interesting because this is where I like to call like painting over your photos I guess in a way. Mm -hmm. So I want to go ahead and start by using these uh, mask to uh, mask tools. So usually these three here in the middle brush linear gradient and radio gradient is the primary three that I really enjoy using. I sometimes get carried away, but we kind of want to put, pull the focus in the center of the frame and sandwich this image so that when you look at it right from the get go, you'll people will be drawn to the middle of the frame mm -hmm. rather than anything else. So in order to do that, we will kind of create this mask and just darken the top frame first. Maybe bring down the blacks as well as the shadows, maybe even the whites. And then that looks so much better. It's a bit darker and moodier. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it is though affecting this area too. So we're going to subtract it and use the brush tool to subtract. And it can be a rough job like this. And it'll look, it'll look really much better, um, especially because of these lines here. Mm -hmm. These lines that the, uh, the cloud formation is creating kind of gives that separation depth. So we want to kind of use that as an advantage and keep making these masks in different uh, length, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. And so we want to separate it here, right? Where this cloud formation is like forming mm -hmm. and even go darker. Like so. And that kind of makes it a lot more moodier. Yeah. <laughs> if, if that's what you're going for and that's exactly what I would go for. So yeah, it's it's already like that is before and we're already here where you could say you could end it here if i was just mm -hmm. starting out i'll be super happy at this stage but we're gonna keep going and create <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna stop here and <laughs> just keep going with this gradient and darken the bottom part of the frame mm. so we can further focus on the center This is so beautiful so far. It feels very, like you said, moody. It also feels really cinematic. Like I'm looking at, like I can imagine being in a theater and seeing like <laughs> a quick clip really? of, of, of uh, <laughs> yeah, I, can, I love things that are very moody and cinematic feeling. And so the amount of depth that's in this photo is beautiful. Oh, thank you. I, I, I think it, I, I like it, but I feel like I'm just too used to the Tokyo <laughs> cityscape that I don't, I kind of forget to. Yeah, I appreciate I, it sometimes, which that. is not, yeah. I feel that when you're used to seeing something every day or often, you, you kind of, you know, forget to see the beauty. But someone like me living in Phoenix, Arizona, let me tell you, <laughs> we do not have cityscapes that look like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Tokyo's really unique because yeah. it's not, it doesn't feel like a city. It just feels like a multiple small cities mm. that like piled up together. So yeah. Yeah, like you see this area with a sky tree, but in the distance you see another city. Mm -hmm. city. So yeah, um, I think that looks, that already looks really nice. Um, and if you compare it, we really pull the focus in the center. Yeah. And then we went from this kind of a not so pleasing magenta toned blue hour to this blue hour that really looks like a blue hour. So. Yeah, that is how I pull focus in the center of the frame. I think we can even go further and just darken it a bit more on the top here. And yeah, I think that is how I will go about pulling the focus in the center. And then from here, I think since this is the main subject, it is a bit hazy and it's losing um, a bit of contrast in my mm -hmm. opinion. So. Here we can quickly use the brush tool and it'll first look a bit ridiculous, but we just paint over the main subject with the mm -hmm. brush tool and I'll try and do this as quick as possible, but a rough job usually is okay. It's, it usually works fine mm -hmm. not too 
important if you're picky about it you can always obviously do it like in more detail which helps but it depends it's it really depends on the subject but, yeah um that literally took like maybe 15 seconds mm -hmm. and we go and bring the exposure by one and then if you go and bring the clarity up you can see that it really pops a yeah. whole lot more yeah and that is exactly what we want okay so i think that looks oh, wow it pops really so well good. it's beautiful and if we hide this that is a difference yeah. and yeah it's it really makes a whole lot of a difference and that literally took a minute mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah it's it's so powerful like i don't it's so normal for me to use all these tools but if you think about it it's just pretty crazy um i think yeah i think this is this is pretty good now i might this is very uh detailed but usually i recently enjoy using a a star filter so mm. it creates these glows but in this case i didn't use it i should have but in i don't think you'll no one will notice this yeah but i do love adding like more highlights or like into these like lights so what i mean by that is maybe like dehaze a little and there's like a like a slit yeah i see that <laughs> but like you can't tell if you're like zoomed out mm -hmm. but it's like a little detail that's nice in there and we had someone, so someone said, it's been a long time. I haven't photographed a cityscape. My last photo of a cityscape is just a disaster. And <laughs> I would, not to call out that comment, but I wanted to ask you, what would you say are some like tips that you have for people that are wanting to shoot? I know we're going to look at more landscapes and stuff like that, but what are some tips that you might have for people that want to kind of do that type of photography? Uh, cityscapes. Um, I, I think it's very subjective but like what you're shooting also matters it i mean mm. you can't just point a camera out your window and take a city photo mm -hmm. of course you have to make an effort to um kind of do your research and see what you like and what you see um what you consider aesthetic mm -hmm. and then say if, for instance this this view is aesthetic to you you love it and then you go shoot it but then there's also this consideration that the weather can like ruin the image. So yeah, like some people hate the rain. They don't go out to shoot in the rain, but I love how the contrast, mm -hmm. like the rain brings the contrast and it mm -hmm. really pops, especially when it rains and then the sun hits, it really glows. So you got to really kind of figure out what you want to shoot and yeah. when to shoot it. And usually it's always in the lighting. So mm. as long as you can, if there's one thing that anyone should learn is lighting. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it. Like that's the, that's the, that's the one thing that I would tell myself, yeah. if, like my earlier photography self, like when I was still starting up. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> is I guess no, like no amount of editing can fix a bad light. That's true. That is very, very, very true. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's that's one thing I can say. But yeah, um I think it's pretty good. Like it's pretty done, I think, in terms of the image. I might just go ahead like this and create a massive radio filter and give give that little bit of pop i think that looks good um yeah and of course if you don't like the contrast you can always like kind of tweak it a bit like this mm -hmm. like but in general i think i'm pretty satisfied with that so i want to go down here and show you guys 
this right here. This is um, the split toning tool, which I already def as default put into the blue hue. But if you like a warmer tone, you can always like add like different colors mm, to the yeah. image. So that's orange. And that really make that already that alone makes a difference. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not doing a great job right now, but <laughs> you can see that the tones Completely. Yeah, oh. I love I love the color wheels to, to to really focus on just how you can just change the whole mood of an image. So it's really cool to see how that just with the the edits that you just played around with how that changed the the mood of the image. And there's a question, another question, and y'all okay, are yeah. popping in the in the group chat. I love to see y'all. <laughs> I love to see the chat bumping. I love it. I love it. Um, Sam has a question or Sam posted a question that was from YouTube that says, um, what monitor do you use? Oh, okay. Um, so as with every monitor names, it's just these weird alpha, like numbers <laughs> and like alphabets that I can't even remember, but it's a, it's one from Ben Q. So I was a fan of the look of the Apple, um, the XDR. Mm -hmm. monitor but it's seven grand so this is 1.5 okay and it looks really similar from the front so i really highly recommend it but yeah 1.5 if you can justify that it's i think it's worth it i think it's yeah. one of the best so it is from bank you i just can't remember the the <laughs> name the exact name <laughs> No problem, no problem. I think that's good enough. At least we know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it's known. It's it's like the alternative for a Apple's mm. XDR monitor. So if you search that up, it'll, it'll, it'll come pop up. up. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think we can say we're pretty good with this image, yeah. and we went from here to here. So, um, yeah, this is how I would go about editing a Blue Hour cityscape. So yeah, I mean, I think I I can move on if if anyone else yeah. doesn't have any questions regarding uh, the. If y'all have any questions, let us know. Oh, there is another one. Do you print your photos? If so, if you do, what is the biggest print you've ever done? Um. Yes, I do print, and the biggest is an A three. So not that big, mm -hmm. but um, I had a. A dozen of them printed exclusively for sale. It, it's it's like this uh, pagoda with a Mount Fuji view, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's I, I put yeah. I think if you go on my website, you'll it's right there, so you can have a look. But that one's I think there's two more left. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think we're good. I loved how you kind of. I love the detail in the sky and I think that's my my favorite thing how you were able to really separate the different clouds and the detail and how moody it is it's just so absolutely stunning so <laughs> I love it I hope you all love this image too but I think we're in a good spot to move forward to whatever yeah, next. of course um so I do want to kind of go and show you guys how you can also edit a flatter image so this is another photograph this is a shot in uh shanghai so these towers they look really like for me it was something new and it was really appealing so mm -hmm. i shot it. um it's also in the early stage of blue hour i think you can see a bit of the pink here but mm -hmm. it's pretty much um towards the blue hour so here i think the goal is kind of similar to before but more uh, focused on the building. So I want to kind of bring these buildings out more and create contrast. And I might, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's similar process in the beginning. I will try and go real quick so we don't waste too much time, but mm -hmm. we crop it first. Um, just so yeah, my weird cropping technique. <laughs> Like, like I align the build. <laughs> I know it's just, it's a bit embarrassing, but we'll go with that. And then I hate this side building here. It's a bit distracting in the eye. So mm -hmm. I'll quickly, actually, I can go down here and go like that. And then I think that's really nice. Yeah. That's uh, this 
works. So same preset. I'm just going to go with the same preset. This is like the tone that I usually go with. Oh, so it always works well. Again, we just quickly go and bump up the exposure. Um, and yeah, we'll start from here. So let's go down here and there's you already know about my split toning more mm -hmm. on the blues. So here we have the HLS and I want to talk a bit about the HLS. And usually I kind of make these all neutral except for the greens and the blues, especially those are the three colors that I focus on, but this there's not much green. So we can, as you can see, we can mm -hmm. kind of ignore that for now, but blues in order to create a more subtle, like, not necessarily a rich blue, but rich, but also like subtle blue mm -hmm. that I go for. I usually really go down with the saturation, mm -hmm. but then bring the luminous down. So mm -hmm. my most asked question is how do you get your blues? And yeah. literally how, and I've been doing this for a while, but yeah, I think I really enjoy having this control. Yeah, the saturation down and then the lumin luminous down. So yeah, I like how, I like this this tone of blue that I'm seeing. Yeah, it's I think it's it's more subtle. Yeah. <laughs> not like a saturated in your exactly. face. Exactly. So that is how I go about getting my blues. And I'm not gonna go too in detail of getting the exact like perfect colors. Um, because I kind of wanna focus on the getting these buildings to pop. So again, using the gradient. Uh, my bump up the exposure and then so we can see a bit more but mm -hmm. everything in the shadow we want to kind of bring it further into the shadow and everything that's in the light we want to bring it up and in order to do that we can really say let's start from this bottom half of the frame where these uh, focus on these white mm -hmm. buildings so we can draw like a filter all the way up like this and then bring the exposure a bit of the shadows and blacks to crush the blacks a bit okay that looks good and then we again use a subtract uh, brush mm -hmm. and paint over the parts of the building that's that the lights hitting so, and two can be really rough. It doesn't have to be anything. I mean, you can spend more time doing this, but then we're going to probably sit here for <laughs> way longer time. <laughs> Just watching me paint over the <laughs> isn't ideal for this uh, live. So I'm really going to go quick with this. But as you can see, I'm only painting the parts where the light's actually hitting. Mm -hmm. I like that attention to detail and how that's really bringing out those buildings a bit more yeah i think um this is like my favorite thing to do oh it's, it's so beautiful <laughs> it's so satisfying to do as well like okay um but yeah i think you can get the idea so yeah. let's say that's we should just call it for that for this one uh, this mask and then we already went from this to wow. this which creates this pop and then we kind of just keep going with it and to like even like finding like trying to get that fine amount of uh, uh exposure i guess you could say mm -hmm. you can kind of just use a brush and brush over it again in the parts that you kind of want it brighter uh, like this again this is a very speedy way to do it just because of the sake of explaining and showing you guys how I do things. But of course I take way longer in reality, but mm -hmm. okay. So I think that is how I will go about bringing the photo, a flatter image to kind of pop more. And we can actually use this technique for these towers too. And if we go ahead and make a brush tool so this building here the center of it is dark which means that it's not the light's not hitting mm -hmm. and i want to 
kill that even more with the brush tool and just going down with the exposure. Yeah, I really like how you pay attention to light and how it's how it's presenting itself in its in the photo, so that way you can just see what you want to enhance, like how you just want to enhance the lighting in the photo. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I think it's exactly what you said, enhancing the mm -hmm. lighting that's already there. Um, yeah, I think it's really just about um, painting. It's kind of like a, it's just not even photography now. It's just painting, mm -hmm. really. And either you find it fun, enjoyable, or not, it's gonna really show in your final image. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Even if uh, these parts, I think you the orange light, I really love. It yeah. really complements the mm -hmm. blue. The blue. So yep. I think I can actually just bring the saturation and that already looks yeah. a bit better um and you can change the color of the oranges and reds as well like this mm -hmm. but usually it's safer to if in doubt it's safer to stay in the middle yeah um, so you don't mess with the colors and it doesn't look off but yeah that yeah, orange think... complements the blue very very well yeah i think it's i think the blue and uh, orange is a cheat code for everything yeah <laughs> easy way out but it's it's good it's like popular for a reason so mm -hmm. um you can also further enhance kind of like where the light in light's coming from and it's really mm -hmm. simple but if you just make one uh radio filter here and then just go one two three exposure maybe like dehaze so it's kind of mm -hmm. it, Faded. it looks nice that way and then bring this time instead of dragging it down or bump down up we can drag it this way sideways and then this gradient we can like darken it a bit mm -hmm. like so here oh, that's beautiful. and then because we don't want to affect this part of the frame, which the this uh, radio filter lives, we can subtract the mask that we just mm -hmm. made on the, the left. Yep. And then I think there was another question. Let me catch up on the chat box real quickly. Um, somebody did ask: In the future, would you stick with your full frame? Um, or would you might want to change to a medium format system for your camera to get more detail in your photos in the future? Uh, I think <laughs> so. My ultimate goal is to carry one camera body and not two. So I shoot mm. video and photo and for video, I'm very specific to have a 4K 422 10 bit like codec. So mm -hmm. In order to do that, I have to either have a Sony A1 or carry an FX3 and an A7R camera, mm. so two cameras. So mm -hmm. ideally an A1 full frame camera, and then I can shoot everything. Mm. So I yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. that's the goal. Bringing bring your every oh, your system down to just one camera that could do everything yeah, that you I need mean, to do. <laughs> it's a nightmare sometimes yeah. to like switch every yeah. I, and it's heavy as well. You could be yes. carrying another extra lens if it wasn't for that body. Um, it's way too heavy. Way, yeah, way too heavy. And just out of my curiosity, well, I know we're still continuing to edit this photo, but out of my curiosity, when, how did you get into shooting cityscapes and landscapes? Was this always how you started your photography? I know you, you do portraits too. Did you start with portraiture and move into this or vice versa? Um, I started from exploring abandoned places and mm. I met this one guy from the US. He was also exploring and um, yeah, he kind of, we kind of connected and then from there he used to, do, he does cityscapes. And so he came to Tokyo. 
I was I live here so we mm -hmm. met back in Tokyo and then he's like we should capture something capture a cityscape that no one's ever shot before and I'm like okay like, well how, how do you do that and then mm -hmm. he just took me to this building it was like a it was like a rooftop of of a building but only workers can go there but like he, we just like kind of snuck in took a photo and that moment was like the moment I wanted to do photography mm. forever like that wow. if it wasn't for that I wouldn't be here I think so yeah that was the whole yeah, that's the whole reason I'm doing cityscapes and oh, photography wow. <laughs> oh I love I love when there's like a a personal like yeah. story and experience behind why we do what we do so that's beautiful thank you for sharing yeah thank you for asking <laughs> Um, so I think, yeah, I think I'm really happy with this and we can really yeah, see the difference. It's beautiful. How, I mean, yeah, we can pop these part a bit more, but uh, in general, the concept is, um, yeah, bringing the bright parts brighter and the dark parts mm -hmm. darker. And I think, uh, yeah, that's a one skill that's pretty like easy. Like I'm pretty sure anyone that just watched how I did this can do it like right yeah. after. So that's the beauty of Lightroom, how easy it is to like mm -hmm. learn and like adapt. Like it's, yeah, I mean, first when you see this chart, it's kind of like, it's really complicated. I mm -hmm. think it's like a math problem almost. <laughs> it, like it's not that hard, it's so easy. Yeah, it's very, it's very user friendly, which is why I love Lightroom too. Everything is kind of quick and straight to the point which is really really nice to get you know whatever results you're trying to get yeah i don't i don't know any other software that's like this like user-friendly and yep. powerful yep lightroom is a gem <laughs> it's what i started <laughs> it's a, it's what i started it in um i was for a long time really really afraid to go into photoshop because i was like that is like a whole nother universe um and i think this power <laughs> this power for sure and being able to use both tools but I think Lightroom in itself is such a incredible and universal and just very just simple user friendly tool to use. So I, I love it. Yeah, I don't. I think anyone can learn it. Even yep. yeah, it's like I think I believe it's like if you're if you don't speak English, there's like for Japanese people, there's like Japanese, which is I great. Think. Yeah, yeah, I remember seeing it and it was so weird, but like it's cool, like seeing different languages too. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, oh, for wow. city cityscapes, that's. Um, are, we, are we good there? I think we're good. Uh, I think that's how that's how I would go and about it. And if we can just pause, I know we've been editing for a little bit now. If we can just do a quick recap of both photos, so uh, and just kind of covering what you did when you were editing these cityscapes, just in case for anybody that just might have joined the live currently. Okay, um, let's start from the first photo that I edited. Uh, just a rundown of how I went from this to this i feel like this is a better better view okay yeah. so we started off with a basic crop just align everything and then we quickly uh added a preset because that is that helps um fast like that helps the process um in terms of like editing so mm -hmm. it adds more blue because my presets is more leaning towards like the blue kind of tone so that's what we did and then we pretty much just all we did was uh create uh, these uh masks so we kind of brought these multiple masks on top and bottom of the frame mm -hmm. and kind of darkened it uh using just blacks shadows pulling down the exposure and then that way uh this top and bottom part of the frame gets dark which means we can focus on the center of the frame mm -hmm. and then that really creates a leading line uh not a line but like a leading i don't know what you call it just like a focus like a yeah yeah focus nice point. focus point yeah the focal point, focal point? yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> uh, my english <laughs> okay so yeah that's what we did and then we kind of didn't res preserve too much of the highlight because we didn't mm -hmm. care about uh these parts and then yeah focused on the center brought it up 
uh, added mold, like brush tool to kind of mm -hmm. paint over the subject, the main subject, which is this tower, and then boost it up the clarity, yeah. not too much, but just a bit. So it's it pops a bit more and it's a bit more crisp. But yeah, that's how we went from here to here. Beautiful. Yeah. And then for the second image, we kind of used the same uh, tools, but this time we tried and create from this flatter lighting situation mm -hmm. to a more interesting, uh, dramatic uh, photo. So uh, in order to do that, we kind of created, again, the same uh, masks. I should pull this up. I should have done this before, but um, yeah. So this mask, yeah, and then we darkened the whole mask, but then subtracted parts of it using the brush and painted these uh, mm -hmm. parts of the buildings where the light is hitting. As you can see, there's it's apparent that the light's hitting in these areas, even yeah. in this photo. So that's how we brought up the brighter areas. And then because of the initial mask that we created, uh, we pulled down the exposure and the shadows and made it darker. So it creates that uh, uh, contrast. So bright areas are brighter and dark areas are darker, which creates layers and depth. So that's how we uh, made this bottom half of the frame. And then just a simple uh, mask tool, kind of this uh, radio filter to blow out a bit of the left side of the frame because that mm -hmm. is the direction of the sun and yeah darken the right side using another uh, mask and subtracted this part here so that's how we created this image oh, beautiful awesome so if y'all have any questions i don't see any see some people left the chat thank y'all for joining and if you're joining that was a nice recap of what we're doing and of course if you have any questions or comments on anything that we've done thus far um any questions for yoki please drop them in the chat whether you are on youtube or behance we can go ahead and answer those questions for you so i think i'm ready to move forward okay <laughs> yay um all right so it's let's move on to a more of a lifestyle cityscape uh, photo let's see so i really enjoy adding a human subject especially myself because my instagram is like my name it's like my my journal mm -hmm. myself kind of mm -hmm. so of course i do love taking photos with friends of friends and portraits but uh, occasionally photos like this is uh, something i'd like to capture so it's me down in San Francisco when it's foggy, just walking down the street, I had this composition. It's pretty popular of a composition, but uh, my friend helped me take it. Um, I'm actually gonna show you guys the final result right away from the get-go. So oh, wow. yeah, that is for, yeah, as you can see, I think this is easier to kind of grasp how I would go mm -hmm. about editing a photo like this, but it's more on the blue. If you compare it mm -hmm. side by side, so, blue but when you look at it as a solo it's not too it's mm -mm. it's nice but um yeah you don't have to go that too deep into the blue if you don't if that's not what you want but um yeah i think the fog element is really what i was focusing on because without it i don't think the photo would turn out as nice um mm -hmm. as you can see the foreground where i am is like crisp uh the trees are like super contrasty and then it fades into the distance mm -hmm. where the yeah so it's i think it's a it's a good uh lighting situation so again we're gonna start off with uh cropping the yes. image and yeah as you can see it's straight <laughs> um, <laughs> i don't know why i do that but all right right off the bat this is too purple but this is the preset and it is on the bluer side but we're gonna quickly fix it with this slide here and put it more on the tint and get rid of the magenta. Mm -hmm. Maybe go down in the temperature a bit for now. And then we can drag this blue down more, the shadows, maybe even the highlights. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that looks good. And 
yeah, that already looks really nice. I think it's all like pretty decent. And then for some reason, I keep the greens uh, desaturated for a lot of photos. But in here, I think these greens look nice. Mm -hmm. Depending on lighting, the greens do look awful and like unrecoverable. Like mm. I, I still to this day don't know why that is. But um, yeah, we like. We kind of want to preserve this green here just bring it back up so yeah that looks better and then i think we can so i don't want to kind of go down with highlights too much because i do love the blown yeah. out look and so we'll leave it at that and maybe bring the shadows back up so here my skinny jeans, they're not too crushed and you can kind of see a bit more. And I think that looks good. Maybe bring the, yeah, the dehaze back to zero. Yeah. I really appreciate, I know we've, you, <laughs> we talked about cropping, but I really appreciate the crop of this photo because the way your eyes lead down like the street up into yeah. this, it's just so beautiful. A yeah, solid I'm, crop is what you need. You cannot go listen if, if an image is not cropped correctly <laughs> <laughs> or shot properly, or too. shot properly. Yep, <laughs> I feel like it annoys me so much when these lines aren't like oh, instantly like straight. Like, you can, I mean, this is a bit too much if I complain, but this line here is a bit <laughs> off compared to on this side, yeah. Um, like, this is. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So that already annoys me, but I mean, if you if that annoys you, editing a photo will be like shooting photos will be like a nightmare. So yeah, I don't, I don't, but <laughs> you gotta pick one. and choose your battles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get the composition right. That's yeah, that's really important. That's... Absolutely. Um. Yeah, I think this already looks good, and I think it's just the same process as before. This. Here too, you can kind of drag this filter and darken it in the bottom part of the mm -hmm. frame so it kind of focuses on the center of the frame. And then, of course, we do want to kind of subtract this part right here on the top. Beautiful. And while you do that, we have another question for you. This is a pop and yeah. chat. <laughs> Oh, so our question is, can you please share the most convenient way of exporting and best settings for exporting? Oh, all right. Um, okay. <laughs> so I get this question asked a lot, but I'm not too sure if uh, I'm doing it right. But I, it works for me. And when you click export, uh, it's JPEG. I have the resolution to 300 and mm -hmm. quality at 100, of course. And that's all I I focus on. As long as that's like 300 and 100, it, I mean, it looks fine. I get compliments mm -hmm. on my Instagram posts, but it's not like I dived in deep and like yeah. studied what the, yeah. So I'm the, this I'm the works same for way. me. So. Yeah, I'm the same way. I that's 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 the extent of my exporting knowledge. <laughs> I mean, if if it works, it works. But it works, um, yeah. I, if you upload in like a poor Wi-Fi situation or cellular data, mm. then it affects the upload quality. And also, if you go on Instagram, there's a setting where you can yep. uh, actively click. What was what was it? Um, high like quality you, upgrade. Yeah, high quality. Yeah, high quality upgrade. Up loads yep yeah so that that i think that is what that's an important setting to have so then that way um when you ever have like when you're up to, uploading your images to, to excuse me to instagram you know that at least you're getting the best quality that you can get on the app yeah i think that's that's how i don't think there's anything else to it i think people overthink it maybe mm -hmm. or just have a bad internet connection or um, but yeah, I'm, that's all I know. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> but if uh, it works, it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it works, why try and bother changing it? Yeah. Um, I think these photos like this, it's very just straightforward. I'll also add 
a radio, maybe just blow out the sky even more like that, just a tad. And maybe go back to this bottom one and then just darken it even a more, uh, a bit more. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that looks good as, as you can see, if I, when I darken this bottom part, the colors of the red changes it's more muted and like a darker richer red which is what i wanted to do anyways mm -hmm. so now i don't have to like go down here and like like change the reds too much mm -hmm. so yeah i think that really helps as you can see that yeah that like salmon ish red tone isn't my vibe so i really like this richer yeah. Red, so it also helps with the uh, colors and whatnot uh, when you add masks. So that's something important to uh, look out for. But I think that is pretty much uh, what I would do. Um, for th I do kind of like paint this area and darken it, but very subtle. But yeah, maybe like cool it down. But that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Super easy and simple um i think we can move on <laughs> mm -hmm, i agree and then there's another question from caleb can you please explain the concept of resolution please sometimes 372 what do they mean 300 the export i think yeah when you're when you're yeah when you're exporting you have your uh, resolution set to 300 i think they just want to know what that means oh okay so <laughs> um yeah I, so basically when I started photography and I asked my friend that was like fully like a nerd with like resolution, like he was like, the, like the nerd. So he <laughs> just told me like this setting works and I'm like, I stuck with it for maybe as long as I can remember, like six, seven years now since I started. So that's why it's 300. There's no really like a logical explanation. There probably is, but yeah, I just don't know why I do. I just do it because i was told to <laughs> yeah i <laughs> say i set mine to 300 i also think i don't know if it's also good for like well obviously the quality of the image but like i don't know if that, I, i'm assuming it also would help with printing as well um but i did oh, the same yeah. I, I was told to set it to like 300 i cannot explain why i just know it works <laughs> <laughs> yeah for printing i think depending on the size of the print you yeah. get it and like usually it's safe to go three four hundred uh mm -hmm. ppi yeah yes french yeah so um yeah i can't give a logical explanation but nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't think most people can like i don't really think most people can i feel like there's just some things that we were told to do and then everyone just does and then you ask well why do you do that it's like ah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somebody told me to do it that's how my like when I, when I look at some of the things that i've learned some people there's some things that i do um oh and somebody commented and thank you steve so steve said for print shoot 300 300 it's denser denser pixels and not and so no oh so there's no blur and then for the net 72 is fine um so it, if it is for print 300 pixels per inch it is for the web use pixel width and height so thank you steve and pj for giving us some explanations <laughs> maybe that's why my websites don't load fast yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect okay um i think it's straightforward for this one too mm -hmm. so we can kind of move forward i just wanted to kind of touch on this as well but like to shoot different compositions um i posted like this and this as a set it actually mm. performed really well everyone loved it so yeah it's something to remember to shoot different uh compositions mm -hmm. and another question um yeah for cityscapes why do you not shoot hdr hdr i think <sighs> Is there a setting called HDR on a full frame camera? Honestly, I don't know. It, isn't it just bracketing instead that, of an HDR? That's what I, I that's what I think. But Anthony, mm -hmm. if you could explain 
what your um I don't I don't know if there's a setting for HDR. Yeah, I know there's bracketing which people use mm -hmm. to create HDR image. Mm -hmm. But that's just a bit of an extra step that I don't want to take. Yeah. <laughs> that's something that I don't really care about. Okay, so <laughs> I, I get this question a lot. It's re really to, related to uh... HDR, but they say like why my photos are like why why my highlights are blown out kind of but mm. i do it on purpose so yeah yeah i also think some things are just like i feel like i'm i love to say that there's no like right way to really i mean like you know there's some things that are like correct in theory but <laughs> i feel like whatever it works for you artistically like like you said the highlights like someone can say oh why are your highlights blown out and it's like <laughs> a stylistic choice that's just what you prefer and you like in your images which i think it's just as, as a justified reason. So I, I mm. like the blown out look in, in your image, especially like some of these shots. This one, I feel like it adds to the story of the image. I feel like, I don't know, like my eyes, the way my eyes lead from the 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 tracks up to the, like the sky, it feels like, where are we going to? Are we going to this mystical land? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I like how blown out the highlights are. So I feel like with that, especially with that haze in this image, it's just like my eyes feel like I'm, leading somewhere which is really nice <laughs> thank you yeah i mean each to there i think yes there's no right or wrong i guess yep. so yeah awesome what do we have next okay so this is more of a landscape now but more it's kind of similar to cityscape with a human subject to kind of tell a story um i know it's crooked mm -hmm but we can fix this. Let's just fix the this for now. Uh, and then, yep, yeah, it's as simple as that. I don't think you need to really focus on like aligning it to anywhere, but mm -hmm. I guess these right here is the line. Yeah. So um, that works, but uh, yeah. So when I was, when I arrived, um, I just couldn't think of, it was hard. For, I had to like really step back and think of this composition which is the this uh wooden path and then the landscape so this tree on the back here which you can't see it's out of frame casts a shadow which then creates another like a uh, element of layering um and then it pulls focus into the center so i think that's with every most of my photos i try my best to kind of lead the viewers like into the direction mm -hmm. um i want them to so yeah that's how i got this stepped off the wooden path to kind of use this as a leading line as well so yeah i think um i really actually love this photo uh, i guess it depends on the person but um yeah we can quickly start that, by adding and that's you in the image correct this is me yeah i had my friend take again got take it. it for me so got it yeah usually it's like I, I kind of find composition i ask them to take it and then they find a composition and i take the mm -hmm. theirs and it's just uh it's always like that i guess yeah i like that i like that so this right now with the preset looks awful in my opinion <laughs> so bring the exposure up and i think the blue is just awful as well um and it's just too much of a contrast so we can actually either go down like this with the contrast slider and make it that already fixes everything mm -hmm. or we can use the shadows bring the shadows up kind of preserve the blown up highlights like details here mm -hmm. and bring up the blacks so that is personal preference but um yeah, let's, let's go back um, a bit and then just stick with sliding the contrast. All right, so already it's looking less uh, saturated and mm -hmm. contrasty. And I think for this, there's no reason to dehaze. So we'll put that back to zero. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but 
as you can see, all my photos have minus 10 clarity, which mm. kind of helps with my gear in terms of like shooting on a G Master lens. It's pretty tech sharp. So it, it just like tones, the evens it out. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you want the sharpness, but from a lot of the things you don't. And then I am using a black mist filter for 90% of the photos no matter if it's landscapes, cityscapes, portraits, and this is the one-fourth strength. It's hard to tell, but there's one-fourth, one-eighth, and half strength, and one-fourth is a good uh, strength to use for most things. And yeah, I also do get asked a lot um, on if whether or not I'm using a filter. So yeah, it gives that glow, like a softer glow, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Does. So yeah, it really... It really helps with the image being softer. So yeah. Um, but then again, because of this minus 10 clarity, we're not going to get a sharper mountain mm -hmm. and the mountain should be sharp and rough. So usually we can, it's really straightforward, but we can bring the clarity and texture, just paint over it and just kind of make it more rough. Mm -hmm. uh, like how it should be um, even here I think just a rough job but I think that helps yeah, yeah it's more crisp and mm -hmm. then I also do one for these um, fields so mm -hmm. This time, I wasn't thinking that far, but usually I would tripod this and shoot a slower shutter speed even and kind of oh. have a slight blur emotion in the in the, the field. Yeah. Um, I also do that for like when when I shoot like ocean, like mm -hmm. and I want to steal like still water. So. If you don't do that, you can go ahead and use the clarity, like a brush tool with the clarity a bit down, and then it gives that softer look. And it doesn't look that crunchy, so it's like easy on the eye. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you can, if it's easy to tell in through the live, but let's see. Yeah, I think, I think I can see a little bit of it. Yeah, just, just, life, yeah, just but... uh, it's it's like you never want to go overboard. It's like yeah, yeah, cook, yeah. It's like the worst thing when you add too much salt in your um, <laughs> cooking, and then you can't you subtract can't, that. Yeah, you, know? you, you can always add, it. but it's always to play it safe. So that is um, how I would like bring the structure back and then soften the uh, field, but then. I think again the blue he the blue right here very subjective but I don't I'm not a fan of mm -hmm. so we can use the technique before as mentioned before this slider with the luminous down kind of I'm not sure how to explain it but darkens the blue but then mm -hmm. because it darkens the blue we want to compensate with this slider with the saturation and just kind of make it more easy on the eye. And I think that looks much better than yeah. this blue for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I like that. And then again, this is the same technique as before, but it's very effective and you can just darken these shadows. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that brings the mountains to kind of pop and have these yeah. significant contrast mm -hmm. between the light and the dark. Mm -hmm. How did you um, find this spot? Is it a lot of just a lot of exploring? Is this like a well-known area or? Uh, this is like Yosemite Park mm. and um, it was so I always go to like this travel photographer blogs and like instagram <laughs> stuff and then i kind of like 
see their photo and vision like okay is this something i can is there something i can bring new to that mm. location and if that answers yes i'll go shoot it mm -hmm. and if that answers no no matter like how usually 90 of the time no matter how good of the location it is i probably wouldn't shoot it mm. so if in my like mindset it's like if if everyone's seen it why should i go and capture mm. the same photo yeah. just this you know <laughs> it's like a stamp rally so yeah. i just mm, i feel that i feel that i feel that but like you said if there's anything new or new perspective you can bring Mm. and that's nice and i also really i can really appreciate like the compositions that how, how important your compositions are because it brings again that new perspective to the overall image and the location for sure yeah even if it's just a little bit different mm. you know i think it's it's good to challenge yourself i think absolutely but if in doubt you know you can always shoot the same photo have that as a backup and then challenge yourself to do different mm -hmm. ones after but yeah, I think um, overall I'm happy with this photo. And to end it, I'll increase the exposure oh, yes. and glow of this. Yeah, um, in a nutshell, I think that's uh, that's pretty much how I will go about editing like a landscape lifestyle image and oh, that's just so beautiful yeah we just i love that detail in the in the mountains that you brought in um i also really love when the last finishing touch we did where you made it lighter on the left side of the feet of the frame mm. it that it just feels like i don't know, like the light that's like kind of oozing like or making its way yep that. exactly it's flowing into the image so <laughs> that's really beautiful too thank you i think it's it's it only works when it's like the light in this case the sun is out of the frame so mm -hmm. it looks weird when it when you're trying to do this when it's like direct sunlight or like yeah kind of like a silhouette um but yeah if if you're more of a contrasty kind of person you want it more like pop you can always like this can like you know change a lot mm -hmm. if you keep going with the so it's always good to like even i don't know play around usually yeah. not that much but like usually go back and forth and see what uh what works best for you yeah i agree I think that's how you kind of even get to discover your style um mm -hmm. when i got into lightroom i just i will i just love to play with the sliders i just slide left to right yeah i like <laughs> that no i don't like that <laughs> <laughs> and you find your things that you gravitate and then you kind of find your general workflow so it's good to go back and forth so you can at least see what um what each like um each setting is doing to your photo specifically and really understand that mm, yeah it's a, when you first started have did you go like were you like i don't know how to say it like you kind of go back and forth but you don't know like which is better and then like yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I would go back and forth, or like I'll make multiple edits, and I'm like I don't really know what's like. What's the one? Nope. <laughs> or sometimes what I love to do is I think it's crazy and cool how to see how like your style or your eye changes with time. So sometimes I'll go back and re-edit an older photo and see if, like do I still navigate towards the same look or is there something that like <laughs> is catching my eye now it's a lot of stress sometimes it's just like dang that's too many options <laughs> oh yeah I, but it's, it's really never, nice it, yeah <laughs> there's just so I, many options and how you can take an image you know like I that's why I love like sometimes I wonder like if I took one let's say we had a group of us and we all had one image to edit like how many different edits what you oh. get the perspectives and everything because what i see might not be what you see so that's pretty yeah i think i think it'll be actually cool if right? you did, like these photos too and then like come on and then we it. could put it side by side and it's like yo like how easy. like <laughs> it'll just be like how like how exactly. did you do that mm -hmm. yeah i think it's important to um like not I think if you do photography solo, 
you never progress. Yeah. Like, I think I learned so much from my mm. friends and like having their input and like teaching me how to edit. Yes. And yeah, I think yeah, surround yourself with people that you want to become and then exactly i 1000 percent agree with because you know it's it's good to learn from other people and and everybody has their own style their perspectives um and so you never know what you might learn that you might be able to put in your own toolbox that's why i really love like um these lives because like every time i'm watching i'm like whoa i didn't even think about this or consider this detail in a photo now you can kind of see what you've learned and how you can apply it to your work so it's definitely better to not be solo as a photographer and kind of make you know, have a little bit of a community. Mm, yeah, that, that's that's the way to do it. 100%. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the trick. Mic drop. That's all. <laughs> uh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's that's good. I think so far we've been using a lot of brushes and everything, but mm -hmm. it's really like. In different situations you just use it differently and it's like a whole nother like i don't know technique i guess yeah um yeah uh if you want to there's like a few things i want to like cover but i don't know like what's what's best but what are you thinking I think this photo um, I shot for Equinox Hotels. And mm. the thing is, um, if it wasn't for the brush tool, I probably would have not made it. So this, <laughs> the vessel was like off. The light was off. I, I think because um, they shut it down due to some incidences that occurred uh. past. And so it was off. And yeah, what I did was like a preset, like adjustments, of course, but then I'm, um, yeah, I think I'll just, I'm not sure if it, if I should just like edit this too, but um, these, these part here, uh, which mm -hmm. the light is hitting because of light it's hitting, it's not too bad, but what I did was just the same same thing as always and just painting over these areas mm -hmm. with the brush and then okay if you bring the saturation up a bit and maybe like even play around with yeah with the tint yeah tint. maybe not too much but Where is this location wise? Um, this is New York. Oh, I know where this is. Okay, yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like that 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 building, that's that um structure that you're editing right now. I was like, that looks so familiar. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. Um, this is last year, but yeah, it's such a shame. It's like yeah. shut down. But I when I I went on my I took a trip to New York for the first time earlier this year in April and I wanted to visit this location but because it's being shut down there wasn't much to see. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. yeah. So I was like, why does this look so familiar? It was on my list of places to visit. <laughs> so, oh wait, you didn't go or you no, went? No, we we didn't end up going. Um, oh, because it was shut down. Yeah, because it's shut down. But I think you can still go as like as a tourist to look outside, of course. But oh um, uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't end up going. But I was like, why does this look familiar? That's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's still nice. But yeah. in terms of photography, it's unless you're like here with the pool, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really make sense. I yeah. Like, but, um, yeah. Yeah, like because of the brush tool, I could really make this pop. Yeah. These are. Uh, I'm not sure what it what it's made like. I don't know what it is either, but yeah. the 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 kind of like the lights or whatever making them pop a bit more. And it's like could... a material, um, like a copper looking. Oh, material. okay, it's Light material, it so it's not yeah. like a okay. Um, yeah. So if I go down to the U, I should have brought this into Lightroom, but um. 
this is the final image. So Ooh. maybe I'll just do this. Because <laughs> I don't think every, I don't think many of you guys want to see me edit that from scratch. <laughs> I don't. It's just for me, if I yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't want to watch myself edit this. Um, you can see the before and after. And then what was the decision with um with because I can see you in there, you're blurred out. So what was uh with your settings as well? What was your kind of thought process there? Oh, uh, okay. Um so uh, I get this is this too. Like people are like, yo, you're blurry, like what happened? But like it's like the movement. I just is like, that, yeah, the movement is really nice. Yeah, it's just I mean to some people it's weird, but um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like i actually did another um selection of this one too see how i'm mm -hmm. blurry like but i like it like that's mm -hmm. how it's supposed to be um go. and like how this is blown out people are like yeah. yo it's blown out like, but... that's what i like <laughs> and so what what are you gonna do about it <laughs> <laughs> exactly i know i i called it out because i liked the motion blur um Oh, okay. Some, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's something the first that I. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the first time. Someone said. Really? I oh, I like it. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I, I. I like it. It's more interesting to look at than just like, oh, someone who's walking in full focus. I don't. There's mm. more. It's more interesting. So, I'm a fan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's not for everyone. Yeah. It's not for everyone. But, yeah. Um, yeah, like one brush tool, and it just like something like this can like turn into mm -hmm. this and so yeah i think in overall the whole um today's live too it's just like really enhancing and using brush or like not just the brush but the tools here the gradient the gradient yeah. tools in general they're yeah just like a lifesaver so I think that's one thing that if I'm taking away something from like what we've done so far, it's definitely the gradients and obviously the brush tools. Cause I tend to not use them as often. I do a lot of like, I love color. So I spend a lot of my time either if I'm in Lightroom, I'll spend my time in like the, the HS, well, S, HSL sliders or like the color wheels. Mm. Um, that's just what I do. But then you have more general overall edits that you're doing. Whereas the gradient or even the brush tool, you can really target specific areas. So that's really dope how you're able to bring some aspects of the image, you know, more, add more depth or bring it more alive. So that's really nice. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's just fun to use. I feel like it's like, yeah, yeah it's like painting. Like... Yeah, when you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, basically, it's not it's not photography anymore. You're a painter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have that tablet with a pen, yeah, oh, it's gonna, it'll be fun. Like you just it's not even editing anymore like. yes yeah so y'all let us know are you the painter type are y'all gonna be using these brushes gradients i like the idea of that so let us know if you like to take the same kind of same kind of approach with your images um in the chat and again if you have any questions i see there's a lot of different conversations that are going on in the chat box which is great so if you have any questions let us know and we still have about 25 30 minutes left of our lives so we can still keep going on to anything else that you might have for us yeah um i think i wanted to so basically um when you when you first start photography and a lot of people ask me this where it's like there's always tourists there's always people around there's always mm. like so many like elements that you gotta kind of think about and you can't always be shooting there for hours or like even use a tripod it might be in the middle of the street so there's one technique that um i want to kind of highlight or like show yeah. you guys and this can be not just like for the sake of like creating a beautiful photograph but if you want to shoot something that's nice for yourself mm -hmm. this is like the way i would do it and um so i found this delorean parked in new york times square and this, this guy right here is the owner um apparently and then <laughs> <laughs> um yeah definitely pay him if you're gonna shoot because no everyone tries to like just shoot without paying him it's oh. it takes a lot of um time and money to maintain such vehicles so mm -hmm. um, yeah so basically 
here I like this image and I wanted to post this. It's not my typical post, but I really loved it. So, mm -hmm. but then there's so many aspects of this image where it's like this guy is still here, and I guess he that's a bit annoying mm -hmm. there. So, um, usually I send the photos that I kind of want to mess with in the quick collection. So I'll shoot, I'll choose multiple photos uh, through these series that will like cover this and this part of mm -hmm. oh, the image. Okay. So it could be this one because um, there's no one here. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other photo, there's a guy here. Mm -hmm. um, for the sake of this, this tutorial, I'll just use two of these images because it's a bit uh, simpler to understand. We won't have to go into two, like so many photos, but um, yeah, so this guy, get it, try and like cover it with this. And here, I think we have to use Photoshop, but what I like to do is go to photos, edit, and open up um, Photoshop straight from Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that it's... Uh, here we go and this multi yeah. Let me just check the two one. So we drag the file. I'm struggling. <laughs> Are you in the file? Are you trying to find. All right, the there we go. There we go. <laughs> And then all we have to do is align it and then you just hold shift and let go and it'll drag like a highlight. Mm -hmm. And then we first go to, um, I don't even know what, what how you say is. <laughs> I can't rasterize. use a uh, rasterize layer layer. Okay. So, um, basically this is in the middle of the street and I just wanted this photo some Thing that I can potentially post and use but because it was in the middle of the street you can't tripod it but I had mm -hmm. a friend so I was I told him take multiple photos when the back like the background is moving so he took mm -hmm. like maybe a dozen or two dozen photos and you can always stack a few to get rid of each of the background um, depending on how many people or whatever is around you that or what or whatever you, you know you can get rid of mm -hmm. um and since like this food truck i there's no way i couldn't do anything about it yeah um so it's there but we can definitely um get rid of these some stuff here so as you can see if we check these two photos it's completely off um off in terms of composition, it's not aligned. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. kind of highlight these two and then we go to, actually I haven't done this in a while. Um, oh yeah, layers. I'm forgetting everything. Oh no, uh, edit and then it's just, uh, I think it's, yeah. It's auto align and then it's there's multiple options, but I don't know too much about these options. Mm -hmm. um, it usually <laughs> works if you just do auto and it just kind of aligns these two photos together. So if you mm -hmm. go back and forth, it's pretty much like perfect. Okay. And yeah, let's go ahead and put this up here. Um, uh, okay so basically this top layer has this guy in the frame this bottom doesn't mm -hmm. and there's probably like a million ways to do this but usually i just simply use the eraser tool maybe go like down in the hardness so it's softer on the edges 
and then we can just like simply like、oh. erase that guy. <clears throat> and I know that a lot of people would, well, depending on the situation, I guess you could use like,、um, like this. These tools here, like patch tool, like spot removal.、Mm -hmm. Not sure why I can't click it. But, okay. Healing brush, spot、mm -hmm. removal, and kind of like try and like get rid of people. But it's it's way more, it's way faster this way because you're just you're using multiple、uh, photos, but you're just using a eraser tool. Yeah, it's like that. So. <laughs> I like、um, I I do like that when you um so when you shot when you asked your friend to shoot this this image you were keeping that this in mind that you would essentially just layer maybe one or two of these images together and just cut kind of piece together whatever whatever it is you wanted to keep or take out. Yes, so it you do have to keep in mind that not everyone if you're if you don't know about this they don't know what. You're trying to like accomplish, so they might、mm -hmm. not get it. So if they tilt it too much, it's not、mm. gonna. It's gonna be harder to work. So you gotta kind of make sure to tell、uh, whoever's helping you to kind of relatively stay pretty like、uh, on point to、mm -hmm. like like a tripod, like a human tripod. Yeah. But, you know, you don't want to kind of like. That's a lot like, of pressure. Tilt up or down, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you just look at all corners and see that everything is、like、aligned, yeah, aligned, and you don't move, and it should work. This、yeah. time, it was pretty off, but even if it was off, we like with one, like three steps, we could easily fix like it,、yeah. fix it, which was like edit,、uh, auto align, and then align auto,、mm -hmm. boom, and then and it's just it's aligned now, which is perfect. Yeah, it's it's so powerful. I I think. It's way better than using tripod. Even if you are、mm. using in like a touristy locations, you can actually use this method to quickly shoot it instead of putting、trying、tripod. To, exactly,、end. trying to set up a tripod and then you don't know if someone's gonna hit it, especially in busy areas. You don't feel I don't feel comfortable if if I was、uh, out here. But I you would need a friend, so you would need somebody to come and support you. That yeah, way, you would need someone. Yeah, yeah. If you're solo, you're stuck with a tripod. But yeah, dang. <laughs> I've been there so many times. It's not <laughs> bad, but it always helps. So yeah, yeah. You also have to kind of、uh, have in mind that when you use this,、uh, I guess, auto align technique, that these sides are gonna get a bit. You get to crop the sides a bit. So、mm -hmm. maybe in doubt, shoot a bit wider or like back out a bit. And so when you, you know, for instance, okay, if you say you're good with this photo. The cool thing is you can like save it just like that and just you just wait I think for、mm -hmm. and then it's gonna pop back into once you save it it'll pop back into yeah it's like for you. yeah、yep. it's like so easy and you can edit here and then go back to Photoshop、mm -hmm. save it again it'll like update so yeah、um, I think. We can even if you're lazy, we can we don't have, we can you know either ignore this or crop it, but we can use the other like layers or、mm -hmm. other photos that he wasn't there, or even this truck, and then get rid of that as、mm -hmm. a whole. But、um, yeah, I think that that should do it、um, in terms of getting rid of people. So. I think that's a really neat technique to yeah, that's kind really of、nice. in mind if in doubt.、Um, I think I have the final photo somewhere. So that is the fine the、Ooh. one that's edited, but yeah, Wait, so, actually. So yeah. how did did you have a a shot where? Okay, there's nobody in this image. Okay, so I was like the other image that you had had people in the background that were crossing the street, so you were able to. Oh, I do like that layering、oh, technique.、Uh, then that's a really good note. There is people here, uh, and the, I mean, technically, you can. There's technically, yeah. I think the other, if you go back, because you had two pictures. Hold on. In Lightroom. Two. Oh. Was there another one? 
this oh i was looking at i don't know what i was this one oh that's the one i was thinking of (laughs) we i don't think we touched that one never mind (laughs) (laughs) uh we use this for the the, just the yeah we just wanted this part and then everything else is kind of too much too many people Mm -hmm. so just took that part here and then uh, erased that area Mm -hmm. um from this frame so it's yeah i mean that was two photos but if you really like if you really want everything perfect you just shoot more when there's no one in that area and then just have a base image and kind of subtract every every frame Mm -hmm. that makes sense um it's gonna take it'll take a bit of time but otherwise you would end up like you wouldn't get the photos so yeah 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 that is a That is something I've, I kind of like using uh, when I'm on the run, uh, mm-hmm. shooting. So, yeah, uh, we can, I guess, move on if there's no any. Yes, let's see. Questions. I don't see any other questions unless I missed one. I don't think so. So if y'all have any questions, please let us know in the chat, whether you are in um, on YouTube or you're on Behance. I see some people are talking about cards, colors, samples. So, so there's other conversations going on as well, which is great. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but if y'all have any other questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. That way we can talk about it. Do we have any do you have any other other photos that you want to go over today or do you want to kind of give us a sneak peek of what we're doing tomorrow as well um we can do uh is there time to do both or let's there is time to do both (laughs) yeah um i also okay i think i want to because this is the color grading um Mm -hmm. i mean we can edit this too but in terms of say for instance okay So let's say for, for presets, um, usually mm-hmm. I, I believe in that when you purchase a preset, it's more of the fact that you're purchasing an idea. So yeah, you follow someone and you like their image. You're not buying it because if you buy the preset, you can apply it and you get the same result. You're buying mm-hmm. it because of the idea of your photos being like theirs does that make sense yeah no (laughs) (laughs) it's hard to explain (laughs) yeah it's like a pro athlete if you're if you're like a fan of a pro athlete and they have a signature shoe you don't buy it because you can be be like that yeah you you buy it so you can find yeah you like the idea of it okay so yeah i do agree because i love presets because they're really because of that same reason um i think presets are really great for if you don't know where to start and you have someone like you know maybe there's a style that you really like from another photographer and you can take their preset as a starting point and kind of see how that works for you and how you can like you know get creative in your own way from that point so you're not necessarily like trying to be just like the person that made the preset but it's like a good like, okay, now I feel inspired <laughs> to see what I can do. A little push, a little inspired yeah. to see how I, how I can take my own image and make this my own. Yeah, I think that's that's really important to know, I think, uh, mm-hmm. especially when you first start out. Because I, I've actually spent like three four $400 on a preset when I first started. I was like, this is a good investment. It's going to help me. And then it's not quite as what I expected. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you definitely learn, because um, I did the same thing when I started the money that I spent on presets. I couldn't even tell you, but because <laughs> you think, because you don't realize that like a preset isn't going to guarantee you a certain result either. So you yeah. still have to understand um, or learn like how to edit and different components or different settings and how that impacts the, pre- the, the, how the different settings will impact your image and change the look of it at all. Um, so there's still a learning curve there, but I think the idea behind presets that was around when I started was, oh, if I just purchase this person's preset, <laughs> I'll be good to go. And it's no. <laughs> yeah. It's, I think everyone goes through that. Yeah. As a, 
Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's one really fun technique that I, I think I still sometimes do, which is if you have this photo, okay, say this is a photo you shot, you kind of, you're really struggling and you don't, you haven't found your style yet. You can, of course, use like people's preset, but I actually love using um, this. But then instead of using your photos or something, you bring, you download other people's photos, people that you uh, like love, like mm -hmm. their style, like the style that you love. And then you drag that photo, say that that photo is um, this. And then you see it next to your your own photo mm. and then you can kind of tweak say i want this blue but i don't know how to get it maybe if i like you know play around with this i can get it closer to that blue and mm. and so on with every color so then you can kind of like match their tone of like the hue of their colors as well as like yeah have a bit of a bluer um vibe you know you can use the the split toning tool to create that as well as if it's warm you can mm -hmm. do that as well and <laughs> i actually really use this a lot um to learn so i think that is Ooh. something really important or like helpful i didn't even <laughs> i don't even do like i don't think i've ever thought of that as an opportunity <laughs> really? to learn no and i think that's because sometimes you like I might have an image in mind or a certain artist that I like, but it, it's really good to, I'm also a very visual person. So it's good to put their work next to your work and kind of play around and see, okay, what is it that you like and how you can take certain, you know, like you said, maybe it's the blues that you like, or it's a specific tone that you like um, and adding that to your own image and placing it side by side as a reference image is really good as well. Mm, I think, yeah, I think it really helps. Um, and it's also fun figuring yeah. out. <clears throat> but yeah, I just wanted to point that out because did you have that, yeah. did you have a favorite photographer that kind of helped you find your own style? Um, I when I first started, I think Sam Calder was like blowing up on mm -hmm. social media, and then I know he's known for like uh, videos, but mm -hmm. his photo had this blue that I really loved. And so I I, ne I didn't necessarily like his contrast, but like his blues were like something I wanted in my photo. So I downloaded a lot of his photos like and did this and mm. kind of like try and figure out how his blues work. And then Ivan one was another photographer that I really loved because his it's like it looks so it's I know for a fact that it's like well edited and heavily edited like there's a lot of gradients there's a lot of color change tweaking but it looks so natural like mm -hmm. it's like a clean look like mm -hmm. paying super deep like paying attention to super like small aspects like the color of everything in the frame and like mute muting it if it's too distracting and whatnot mm -hmm. so I think those two like people like I liked so I kind of like brought two of this like my favorite aspect of their editing mm -hmm. try and figure it out and then kind of like build on it and try and make something of my own mm. I mm. feel that I feel that I like that because I was I, I was just curious because I know even just throughout the images that we've been editing you definitely navigate towards blue blue tones <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's I like your signature blue is a color too so <laughs> <laughs> and my t uh, this is, and this is blue. <laughs> <laughs> so I just really like to see how like I think that's I mean I think that's cool like sometimes you don't have to copy somebody else but I think it's important to like it's easy it's good to get inspired by other creatives and see okay what is it that I like you just explained you knew what you liked and you knew what you didn't like so you try to see okay how can I take what I like and you know add it to my work which you've done very very well so it's nice <laughs> to know where the whole the the, the blue concept came from so. <laughs> uh, yeah it's uh it's it's something that a lot of people love about my work which yeah. i'm like happy about because i love i love it so mm -hmm. it's like that a lot of people do as well so yeah <laughs> oh, love 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 let's see if y'all have any questions we have about let's say about 
10 or less minutes left in our lives. So if y'all have any questions, we will be back tomorrow, of course, but please drop them in the chat if you want to ask Koki any questions or anything of that sort. Is there anything else? What else do we have? So let's kind of give a recap of everything that we've done so far, because I know we've edited a, quite a bit of photos and we did a recap about an hour ago. So let's do that <laughs> that way. <laughs> <laughs> the, the time uh, flies. About, it yeah, flies. forget about the recap. Um, <laughs> wait, should I recap from the first? Or... No, not from the first. Maybe from what we did from this, um, yes, from the set. Um, it was pretty straightforward. I think focus. I think lighting and condition of what you're shooting. In this case, the haze, the mm -hmm. amount of haze. Um, it came. It came and went when I was shooting. So I was here for an hour and a half. And this was the best timing, so I mm -hmm. shot it. But yeah, uh, keeping in mind that lighting change significantly, even if it's like mm -hmm. a few minutes. But um, using that to an advantage created this uh, kind of a layering effect where it's like crisp here, but then it fades out into the distance. Uh, we also, and this was the, pretty much the final result, but we also added mask, a radio filter here to glow from the top. Mm -hmm. and then dragged a another filter uh where is it? i think this one yeah right here mm -hmm. and then at the bottom so it kind of it's less distracting it leads more even though despite the lines here it really lead your eyes into mm -hmm. the frame but this additional mask takes that even further but then because of the mask we kind of created this uh red so yeah. before the red was kind of a lighter red i like this darker red so mm -hmm. it all works pretty well um together um yeah and that is pretty much what we did and we also edited this photo of a landscape lifestyle landscape photo and as you can see, it's if you look at it solo, it's not like it's hard to distinguish that this is like heavily like edited mm -hmm. in a way. But um, yeah, we kind of did the same thing. We had the radio filter here with the glow and then really focused on bringing these mountains pop. So we used a brush tool, which was this one. And then kind of yeah. darken the darker areas like that. And then also brought the mountains, gave it a bit more clarity like this, which mm -hmm. gives contrast, but really kind of makes that the focal point and like crisp, which mountains should be. And then this is hard to tell, but the foreground, the, the field is mm -hmm. a bit softer because we decreased the clarity there and that's what we did for this and i explained how okay we lost that photo but um i we explained that how one single brush tool can really create yeah something like you can pop like specific areas so from this we went to this by just brushing this area and changing the saturation, the temperature, tint, and etc. It's super easy. I think the painting part might take a bit of time, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. Do you use a um are you using a mouse or do you use a tablet? Um, I use a mouse. So I was thinking about a tablet, but I'm very picky about my desk aesthetic. Mm. That it's gonna ruin it. So I can't get myself to. <laughs> I feel that I feel that. <laughs> Do you, don't use a tablet. I use a mouse. <laughs> I've yeah. tried um using a tablet before. I think it's it's definitely like um a matter of comfort and a, it's a learning curve for sure. Mm. Um every time I've tried with my tablet, I feel like I I bought the thing and I've used it like five times and I every time I end up just throwing it to the side and grabbing um, my mouse. <laughs> it's hard it's, it's hard to hard. get you it is if i really want it, to but because yeah. every, everyone let you know and it also looks kind of cool like <laughs> it does it looks professional it does but no me and my handy dandy apple mouse will 
be working together so yeah, I, I know it's a, it's hard to get away from a mouse it's like mm -hmm. it's just so convenient in so many ways it really is um yeah i think last we just talked about how you can kind of get rid of people without using a tripod or those um the Photoshop tools down here, which is all these patch tool, healing mm -hmm. brush, spot, those are nice, but it is very time consuming. And it, without, if you don't shoot it the right way, it's hard. It's gonna, it's just a nightmare. So yeah, we uh, we went to, we literally used this right here, auto align, mm -hmm. and then it just aligns the photos for you. And then you just erase the parts um, that you are not not like you don't like. So, for instance, like this photo. Um, yeah, we got rid of was it this one? Yeah, yeah, we got rid of this mm -hmm. right here, which was like apparent in this photo. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much the recap of everything we've done so far. Beautiful. And what can we look forward to tomorrow? Um, oh, so um, for this these live events, I was told that I should work on a new project Ooh. that I'm excited about, right? And for me, this, there's this weird thing where if I shoot something, I have to ed start editing or at least selecting it that day. And I can't sleep until I start something. Mm -hmm. So in order to have something new, I would have had to shoot something yesterday for this live mm -hmm. event and that's not very like ideal it would it's hard so this is the closest um is it okay to, like, should i just show them we like? can we can we can do a quick preview of what we're going to do tomorrow for sure we have a, another minute or so to cover that before we start to close okay so basically basically tomorrow we are going to be covering portraits Yay. That is one thing that a lot of people are curious about um, in terms of how I edit it, especially I think we're going to focus on color grading, but we're going to jump into Photoshop and uh, yeah, run some things through there and just show you guys how I would go about editing a portrait. And I'm super excited because this portrait is the newest portrait photo series I guess you can call it that I've done mm. recently which I actually uploaded one like triple set photo on Instagram like last night which is on my Instagram it's the newest post and it's going to be from those series mm. so as you can see it's down here but yeah I think it's it's like a <laughs> it was a nightmare to do because <laughs> of the location <laughs> trying to figure out all these like time and yeah, the story itself is like pretty interesting too. So I'm super excited to share my process. And I haven't uploaded on Instagram and I won't I won't have it up um, before the actual live mm -hmm. tomorrow. So yeah, it'll be like something new for everyone to see for the first time. Awesome. I am excited. I'm a portrait type of gal too. This was really <laughs> good today because I I don't shoot landscape or cityscape. So this was really beautiful to see like your approach and how you go about it. But I'm really excited about the portraits oh, tomorrow. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> going to laugh at my like weird like, ah! things that I do that's like not even correct. It just <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, listen, I, I'm team whatever, do whatever works for you. So <laughs> I'm really excited. So um, Koki, thank you so much for taking us through your workflow today. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Sam, thank you for dropping his website and Instagram in the chat. So make sure y'all go ahead and hit up his website. We did talk about some presets. So if you're interested in his presets, you can head over there. Go ahead and head to his Instagram and give him a follow. And make sure that you join us back tomorrow. We will be back tomorrow around 9.30 a.m. Pacific for part two. So you want to make sure that you join us as we edit um, portraits using Lightroom and Photoshop. And make sure that you stick around for this week's Illustrator Creative Challenges with Claudie from Print My Soul. Um, 
the other thing is following the creative challenge, you want to make sure that you follow um, Isabel Pari as she's going to do a graphic design live stream. So follow, follow, follow along as she shows us how she designs your brand and merch using the Adobe Creative Cloud. So stick around for that for sure. Um, really excited to see y'all tomorrow. And Koki, thank you so much again. We'll be back for so another live tomorrow. Me. Get some it's sleep. <laughs> uh, I'm going right to bed after this. <laughs> thank you. Y'all have a good day. Bye.